Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim. Today, we're going to be continuing our discussion on organizations that are uh, in Poland and are assisting uh, Ukrainians with uh, Alicja Szapanska, president of the board of Your Visible Hand Foundation, and they provide a whole range of different services. Alicja, thank you so much for, for spending time with us and explaining your wonderful work and the work of your people and your organization. It's my honor. Thank you very much. So, um, Alicia, could you just describe a little bit about yourself, just as a just as a a bit of stage setting? Um, you have been serving different parts of society since the very beginning of your career. I understand that that you started your career as as a policewoman, so in law enforcement. Is that correct? I actually did. Yeah, I did work for twenty five years, and I served in uh, operational units of the police. Uh, so having uh, having to deal with uh, serious crimes, homicide, rape, uh, all kinds of crimes against dignity, I very quickly noticed that just catching the perpetrator was not enough. Um, those persons who, who are victims of those crimes uh, required further help. So you you have a, a whole acquired a whole set of technical skills. The logistics of investigations and the actual um, uh, pursuit of evidence to create a conclusion, but then you also are thinking about the human dimension. And as you're going through your 25-year uh, police law enforcement um, career, you're thinking that actually the technical skills are not enough. There needs to be an additional uh, piece to that, and and then. That is leading you in many respects to continuing that work in your post-law enforcement career. Is, is that how we should be viewing this? Uh, well, I started trying to help people earlier, uh, still working for the police force, but I had to do this in my off time. So when I finally retired, uh, I only spent two weeks in retirement. I immediately looked for another uh, job, another occupation that will help me fulfill this need uh, to, to help people in their, in their needs. And then, so talk about how you came to the foundation, your invisible hand, and the kind of services that you provide to people. Uh, well, uh, that, this, what led me to the foundation, which by the way, I established, so I didn't join it, I, I, I created it. But this happened really uh, during the first uh, lockdown. Uh, that was a situation where a lot of people suddenly found themselves out of a job. And uh, because of this, uh, in a very difficult situation at that time, there were no clear rules or, or networks supporting people who would lose their job. The system was not ready. So in order to keep uh, whatever I was doing transparent, I decided to establish a foundation and do that, provide that assistance through foundation. And it seems that a lot of what you're doing is just dealing with some practical issues. You, you see a problem and generally the issue is resource in some sense, sometimes, and I, I'm looking at a number of your, your, uh, your initiatives. I see uh, initiative about bread. I see initiative about toys for children. I see some initiatives that are localized by location and some are more general. Could you describe some of your practical uh, programs um, so that we understand the texture of what you are providing? So basically from, from day one of war in Ukraine, we very quickly shifted uh, to mobilize and uh, get organized to provide as effective as possible help. Uh, for Ukraine and and uh, refugees from Ukraine. Uh, we operate on three planes. So the first plane of our operation is a grassroots media, a grassroots movement, which is based on uh, social media. There are 25,000 uh, on social media. And these are very, very direct uh, things that people do for other people. Something like uh, get clothes for somebody in need, get them a refrigerator because they need one, get a job. Uh, so this is like the first thing that we do. We, we get this, we, we run this 
uh, platform that provides con on social media contact. But one of the goals that we achieve is not just aid, but it will also teach people empathy and uh, the way of looking differently at the other person. That leads us to the, the second plane, which is uh, all the activities that we carry out in Poland. And there is a whole range, let me enumerate. Uh, what was, so, for instance, we, we organize um, projects and activities that get people involved in helping others, irrespective of their uh, race, nationality, or creed. Uh, the, the, there is an action which is called important because they need important because we provide help. Another way we, we um, act, we, we reach out to schools, usually primary schools, elementary schools, and, and uh, high schools. Uh, one of those activities we called soft toys to the border. Uh, there's a uh, there, there was uh, a huge number of children who were stuck on the border, uh, stressed, uh, tired, cold, crying, and uh, the idea was to give them toys, often without parents. Uh, we run uh, all kinds of ad hoc uh, activities uh, as needed. For instance, um, if we have access to uh, for instance, foodstuffs that are near the expiration, we move them to those areas where there are large numbers of people, for instance, who are going through Poland in transit. So they're really waiting for a train to take them a little further. And the third part of our activity, which is the most satisfying, but at the same time, really most taxing for our financial uh, capabilities, usually exceeding them, is to provide assistance uh, to all those persons who are now under Soviet occupation. Uh, we provide food, um, medicines, uh, clothing, all the, all the things that are necessary uh, for survival. We provide um, things that are needed by, by hospitals and orphanages. We are in direct contacts with military units that operate in the areas where, where the civilians might be suffering from the hostilities. So we have information from them exactly what the needs are and we uh, react to those needs. Our uh, activities uh, as a foundation in this area are particularly difficult because we cannot count on any support from either local or central government. Uh, these sort of things that we do are not uh, given any financial, official financial support. This is very impressive what you've done. Just to summarize, you, the, first, the first piece is a community building volunteer network that solves discrete problems. The second piece is transactional, also solving discrete problems, moving resources to where they are needed, whether they are toys or whether you're talking about money, you're, you're solving discrete problems. And it's so impressive that you look at time basically as a, a um, finite resource and you quickly, quickly respond to a need. You identify a need, you respond to a need, you get it done, and you move on to another need. And then the third piece is that beyond the Polish borders, you're moving beyond and identifying needs into Ukraine. And you are also in a very transactional way, identifying that need, figuring out how to fund that, that specific need, doing it and moving on. Am I understanding what you're describing here? It's very impressive. Well, yes, we do that uh, and we uh, put an emphasis on doing that in a transparent way, but we also put an emphasis on using all these activities to make people sensitive and to reach uh, as many people as possible with that message, because a lot of people are thinking, oh, I should have it better than I am, or they don't understand what war is like or what it's about uh, or what it is about so um, what we do is uh, to an extent well we do not really provide um, it on purely transactional principles for instance our aid especially what we do in ukraine we we provide constant assistance the thing is that we uh, always uh, check what is needed at the moment because these changes they shift quite a lot for instance one day it's tents another day it's medicines 
one day it's sleeping bags and other days is bandages so these these are the the the, the things we do also in addition to all this we we pass on the message of the need to help and provide assistance to all age groups as it were it's informed by a street level sensitivity on practical need and response it's 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 very sophisticated i think that that it is probably uniquely informed by your own uh, practical experience in in uh, dealing with people um, exactly where they live, um, which is what your law enforcement uh, experience um, required, and you are taking that and you're you're doing this here. I find particularly admirable your combination of trying to engage people in the values discussion. Uh, could you talk about how you see that unfolding, and do you see people? because as this goes on, people are going to be under more stress and more stressed people can sometimes tip into the negative attitude. Uh, could you talk a little bit about how you see that part of this uh, evolving and whether you feel that you will be able to continue this, this solidarity um, between uh, uh, your people in Poland and the people on your border in Ukraine that, are, that have a shared experience, somewhat of a shared history, um, but also there's a shared sense of threat. Would you think that that, that solidarity will continue? Uh, I've, I've uh, spent uh, 30 years of my life uh, um, pursuing the idea of human dignity, which is key. Uh, human dignity, godly dignity, uh, these are there are values which are not negotiable and I will be up keeping them forever and one more day. Uh, the, the, with, when you talk about the police, yes, uh, this is something that's also common to law enforcement in the US. You have to be faithful to your ideals. You have values uh, and these values are important and we uphold them not just in the time of conflict or crisis. They are universal. It's dignity. It's the right to live and it's uh, equality. Uh, so yeah, those negative trends are going to appear uh, probably increasingly often. As uh, we say, we can get used to every to everything. Perhaps an awful thing to say, you can get used to cancer, you can get used to war. But uh, yeah, that uh, uh, that's what this NGOs are for, that's what volunteers are for, and uh, that's what international tribunals are for, uh, that's what people with empathy are for. This is our role, is to work uh, to overcome those. We need to keep emphasizing the positive values um, in each field and area of, of our activity. And that is how we can um, counteract those negative attitudes. And it's building the society that we wish to live in. We wish to be treated in the way that you are treating others, right? So you are basically modeling the kind of society that we ought to have, that we ought to be a part of. And that does require the kind of work that you are doing. Alicia Szapanska, thank you so much for sharing all the work that you've done. But before we depart, is there is there some aspect of how we can help internationally, how Americans can help you do your work that uh, that you could share with us? How can how can you guide us on how we can help you? I have uh, never had difficulty asking for help for others. I may have difficulty asking for help for myself, but not for others. And the U.S. have been very generous and helping us a great deal. There's this uh, website, Go for Me, and uh, through through this, we are receiving a lot of aid in the forms of packages and parcels. And uh, they they are addressed correctly. They reach us, but once we receive something from the U.S., we have to pay customs on it. Uh, we are a transparent foundation and we would be able to achieve more uh, if we were able to buy certain things wholesale at a better price, um, what we need rather than, than incurring additional costs which don't really go towards uh, the aid. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's probably, the, the, that would be the best way because uh, that's a better way 
to use the good heart and the good intentions of persons in the U.S. who will want to help. So more um, uh, donated money than, than goods uh, would be more efficient and also um, arrangements that would give you access to wholesale. So in addition to uh, donations of, of money, but also um, anything that would keep your costs down would be very helpful. Uh, is, am I understanding that correctly? The wholesale that's available in Poland is usually is usually sufficient. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, an American civilian who buys five pairs of socks and sends them over here in a parcel uh, spends as much money as the amount of money that they spend. We could go wholesale in Poland and buy 20 pairs of socks. And that's without counting postage and customs. So yeah, that's, uh, but there are other kinds of aid and support. Uh, and this is something I wanted to mention because it's for the first time under the patronage of the president of the city of Krakow and um, under the support of various people of art and culture in Krakow, we're going to have a charity auction. It's going to take place on June 18th at 18 hours Polish time. So it'll be in the morning in the US. And uh, it's it's like, not, we're not asking for money for nothing. We're selling things that are, many of them are objects of uh, art and craft that can be bought. They were donated to the foundation and the money goes to the uh, purposes of the foundation. So I wonder if you were able to uh, transmit it perhaps in the US, that would be interesting. We will do that through our social media and, and, and other means. We will try to help in any way that we can. Um, Alicia Szepanska, thank you so much for uh, sharing your work with us, for uh, telling us how we can respond to the needs and for emulating for us, for being an example for us, for how we should conduct ourselves. It's, it's so appreciated, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very much moved by, by these words and by your offer of help. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day and, and stay safe. We very much appreciate you, you coming on. Uh, have a good time and please help us uh, and if you can, uh, because I try, we try to do ev everything to the people uh, feel better and uh, will be able to, to, to live in the Ukraine. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.